Welcome to this easy electrophysiology instructional video. In this video, we'll look at how to generate and refine templates for event analysis. What we want to do first is to generate a template from a representative event in our data. And to do this, we can click Generate Template and then select Data to select a representative event from our data set. It's easiest to select the data in two button mouse zoom mode. So you can right click, select mouse mode and click two button and then click the right mouse button and drag to zoom in. We need to choose a representative event for our first template. So I'm just gonna pan through the plot using the X short key and I'll select this event as it looks as good as any to be our representative event for template generation. Once selected to fit the bi exponential curve, we can just click Fit Curve. And typically, we want to make sure this left edge is lined up nicely. So you can click Trim Left Edge to get that lined up, and then refit the function. This template is now automatically used for event detection. Easy Electrophysiology can support simultaneous analysis with up to three templates. In this video, we'll just focus on the template in the first position and how to best refine it. You can also filter the event selected from the dataset before fitting the curve. Next, we want to refine the template we just generated, and we can do this by clicking Refine Template, and we'll use the template we just generated to detect events in our data, and then fit a new template to the average of those events. So these settings for event detection are covered in our event detection video, so I won't go into them in detail here. The key one is this threshold lower. We just want to make sure that any event we want to detect is passing through this lower threshold. And we can click fit all events to detect events with our template. First thing we can do is check our correlation cutoff value is reasonable. So here we have it set to 0 0.4 and we can click show correlation to show the correlation between the template and the data at every sample. The units here are just rescaled to fit onto the plot. However, the key purpose of this feature is to show the correlation cutoff, which is this horizontal orange line here, with respect to the size of the correlation at each time point. We can adjust the number of detected events by changing this cutoff and rerunning the analysis. For example, with this high correlation cutoff, the horizontal orange line has been raised above some of the correlation values, and the associated events at these time points are no longer detected. For our purposes here, we can stick with 0.4, and this can be done in the same manner with the detection criterion method. The deconvolution options are a little more complicated and they'll be covered at the end of this video. It's also worth noting here that we can select the show window fit option to see the fit of the template to the data at any given time point. To do that, we can just click show window fit and zoom in where the red template is shown on the plot. And by dragging the plot along, we can see the fit of the template to the data at each time point. and we can see the template is fitting these events very nicely, but not fitting at all to the baseline noise. The final thing we want to do is fit another bi-exponential function to the average of events detected with the first template. So similar to the generate template window, we can trim the left edge of the data before fitting. We can also align the event prior to averaging by different points in the event. Typically, the best method is to use the rise half width. That's halfway up the event rise, but we can also use the event peak or the event baseline. So we'll trim down this left edge before fitting. We can also filter if we wish. And to fit the curve, we can just click fit curve. 
If we wanted to increase the fitting window, we can do so by adjusting the value in the window input box. And we can also scroll through all individual events. The individual event interface is more thoroughly explained in our event detection video, including some handy keyboard shortcuts for navigating through individual events. So if we are happy with this template and the detected events, we can use it for a full analysis, which will be covered in the next video. The deconvolution method of event detection is very powerful, and it particularly excels in detecting high frequency events like the ones we have in this data set. In this video, we'll go over how to adjust the deconvolution options to improve event detection using this method. A template has already been generated for this data, so we can go ahead and click Refine Template to adjust some of the options for deconvolution event detection. First, we'll just set the threshold lower to the minimum point where we want to detect events from, and we'll just analyse the first recording in the file in the interest of time. So we select deconvolution, and first we can fit all events with the default settings, and we can click show deconvolution to show the deconvolution of the data and template in arbitrary units. What we see here in the deconvolution trace are these high frequency spikes, indicating whether template and data are well matched. We can click the deconvolution options to play around with some of the settings used in the event detection. If we click fit all events when the deconvolution options window is open, what we see is a histogram of the amplitude of every point in the deconvolution trace plotted in the window and a Gaussian function fit to this histogram. In the deconvolution method, the detection threshold cutoff is determined from the standard deviation of this Gaussian fit. For example, if we set this detection cutoff very high, we can exclude some detected events, and you can see this on the plot with the detection cutoff, indicated with a horizontal orange line, is now above some peaks in the deconvolution trace, and the associated events are no longer detected. We can also adjust the shape of the deconvolution trace by changing the filter settings. The deconvolution trace is bandpass filtered prior to event detection, and this means we can change the shape of the deconvolution by changing, for example, this filter high frequency cutoff point. Lowering the cutoff will have the effect of reducing the sharpness of the peak. Conversely, we can make this very high to allow more high frequencies through. And here you can see the shape of the deconvolution peaks become very sharp. Using these filter options in tandem with the detection threshold cutoff gives you a lot of flexibility for detecting your events. The default settings work really well, but depending on your event types, you may want to play around with these options. As you can see, the deconvolution method works very, very well to detect these high frequency events.